Now, the, the, the last area that I want to talk about today is virtual reality. This is going to be a big year for VR. After giving that speech on April 30th, 2019, Mark Zuckerberg was probably pretty confident that he had delivered the most important and exciting VR news of the day. Unfortunately for him, and fortunately for us, things got a lot more interesting. April 30th, 2019 marked what was easily one of, if not the, most important day in VR's short history. After months of Reddit rumors, leaks, and hype trains, both Oculus and Valve, two of the biggest players in the game, finally revealed their vision of the future of virtual reality. Within the course of three short hours, the details, prices, and release dates of three next-gen VR headsets were announced. In one corner was Valve, touting the details of the next-generation headset that PC VR users have been dreaming of. The Valve Index, with its ultra-high resolution display and PC melting refresh rates, completely shifted the conversation about what a next-gen VR experience should be. In contrast, Mark Zuckerberg outlined a completely different approach. Instead of focusing on raw power and performance, Oculus went for accessibility, low cost, and mass market appeal, and showed off two brand new VR headsets the Oculus Rift S, and the Oculus Quest. In a single day, it felt as though VR had come to an important crossroads, a turning point that could shape the industry for years to come. And it doesn't matter if you're new to VR or you own every headset out there. If you have any interest at all in virtual reality, then you're gonna wanna know what these headsets do, how they're different, why these differences matter, and just what the hell went down that day. So I'm going to do my best to try to tell you all of the information that we learned on April 30th, 2019. Now I could easily make a video about all of these headsets separately, so I'm not going to go super in detail about each of them. I'm just going to really focus on the most important things. And I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the Oculus Quest. The Oculus Quest will be a complete game changer for one reason and one reason only you don't need a PC to run it. At $400, the Quest removes one of the biggest barriers to entry when it comes to quote unquote real VR, as you no longer require a thousand dollar plus gaming PC to play things like Beat Saber, Super Hot, VR Chat, and much more. Like I mentioned earlier, Oculus is trying to get VR into the homes of as many people as possible. And while the Quest will have worse graphics, limited storage for games, and worst of all, a questionably small battery, if you don't have a PC, then this is an absolute no-brainer if you want to get into VR. I predict that the Oculus Quest will easily become the best-selling VR headset on the market before the end of the year, because literally anyone can just grab it off a shelf and be in VR in no time at all. And I really do applaud Oculus for developing the tech that has made a headset like this possible for such an approachable price. Now, given the massive potential of the Quest, it's easy to understand why Oculus would choose to focus almost entirely on its development. However, this focus on standalone VR created some serious doubts about their commitment to next-generation PC VR. And in late 2018, when Oculus co-founder Brandon Erb quit the Oculus team, many thought that a Rift 2.0 would never see the light of day. This is why the announcement of the Oculus Rift S came as such a surprise. Yet, as I'll discuss in a second, it's hardly the upgrade to the Rift that people were looking for. The Oculus Rift S is a PC VR headset akin to the original Oculus Rift, and the biggest difference between it and its predecessor is that it uses the same inside-out tracking as the Oculus Quest, meaning no sensors are required for full room-scale VR. This, in addition to a slight redesign of the headset itself, as well as a modest resolution bump, make the Rift S a pretty decent headset. However, there are a number of questionable design decisions that leave the Rift S in a pretty strange spot. The Rift S has no headphones, no manual IPD adjustment, and most importantly, it has a lower refresh rate than the Oculus Rift Classic. Now, Oculus has claimed that these compromises were made mostly to keep the price of the Rift S low, and it's gonna be $400 at launch, so it looks like they have succeeded. However, these compromises just make the Rift S feel, well, unimpressive, to be perfectly honest. But as I said before, it's clear that Oculus believes that a standalone headset is really the future of virtual reality, and they very well might be right. 
It's just unfortunate that high quality PC VR may be a casualty of that vision. Now, in stark contrast to the accessibility and relatively low cost that Oculus has been focusing on, Valve has been silently sprinting in a completely different direction. The Valve Index, which has been in development for nearly two years now, is the embodiment of a true, no compromises PC VR headset. With a drastically improved resolution, next-gen Knuckles controllers, updated base stations, and a whopping 144 hertz refresh rate, the Valve Index will likely become the gold standard when it comes to powerful VR headsets. But that gold standard is going to cost you. A full Valve Index bundle, which includes the headset, controllers, and base stations, will set you back a cool thousand dollars. The good news is that if you already have a Vive or a Vive Pro, the base stations and controllers are fully compatible with the Index, and you can simply pick and choose which components you want to buy if you don't want the entire package. And that's awesome, so thanks Valve. The Index is an upgrade to the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift Classic in pretty much every way. And that's fantastic news for VR fans who want the absolute best quality VR experience around. But simply put, the Index is not going to be for everyone. $1,000 is a huge investment and it's completely out of the price range of most consumers. Even as somebody who's literally been making VR YouTube videos for like four years now, it was a little bit of a tough pill to swallow when I ordered that thing. And hell, I didn't even get the base stations. It's this contrast between Oculus's approach and Valve's approach to virtual reality that brings me back to why this day was so important for the future of virtual reality. The Quest and the Index, uh, which are mainly the two headsets that have the biggest impact, are drastically different headsets for completely different target audiences. And the success or failure of either of these devices can have a serious impact on the development of future VR headsets. I'm definitely not trying to say that the success of the Index versus the success of the Quest will completely destroy the other market, right? Like that's obviously not going to happen. But I think that this batch of headsets, all of the headsets that were announced on April 30th, can have a massive impact on the industry and the types of headsets that we see in the future. And I also think it's great that all of these headset options are available to consumers so that even more people can get into virtual reality. All I can say at this point is that I am super excited to get my hands on all of these different devices and uh, show them off to you guys. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more when that happens later in May or early June, then click that subscribe button down below. Click that button down below. Also, I'm really interested to hear what you guys think. So either leave a comment below letting me know which VR headset you're looking forward to the most or uh, join my Discord. The link is in the description below. But that about does it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I'll see you next time.